end of the session, uh, and at the end of the session, uh, we will be uh, answering all of your questions, and we will have time for the Q and A's. Uh, before starting uh, our webinar, please join me welcoming our panelists for today, Professor Edward Wong. Uh, Professor Wong uh, holds an MBA from the University of Western Ontario. He is a CFA and uh, he is also a member of the Order of Chartered Accountants of Quebec. Uh, Professor Wong uh, lectures uh, level one, two and three of the CFA curriculum. Uh, he currently teaches as well in Concordia University, and uh, he taught as well at York University. Uh, during his 15 years plus journey in the education field, uh, he, he, he has won uh, a lot and numerous uh, teaching awards and recognitions from many universities. Uh, he held the position of uh, senior investment officer for a 10 billion pension fund, and prior to that, uh, he was a tax specialist with uh, PwC. Accordingly, in addition to the academic knowledge, he brings practical experience to the classrooms uh, that uh, he offers at Morgan International. Now, to give it a go to our webinar, please allow me to brief you a little bit about who we are. Uh, Morgan International was founded uh, in 1995, which is almost 25 years ago. Uh, in Lebanon, and from that location, through professionalism and dedication, uh, Morgan grew organically, and we are currently uh, present in almost 28 locations worldwide, including Europe, India, and the Middle East, and of course, in Canada since 2009. We do have more than 350 certified faculty instructors who are experts in the educational field, and our portfolio consists of more than 150,000 candidates and alumni and more than 500 organizations we dealt with across the past 25 years, be it banks, government entities, and universities. And we are the partners of the leading international course providers. Now, what we do, uh, our state mission statement states that we offer life and career changing solutions for professionals and businesses seeking success. In fact, we believe that the continuing education is the X factor in the success and uh, is a door opener to enhance your career. Accordingly, Morgan can design uh, the perfect training to answer your needs and to prepare you earning recognized business certifications. In that regard, we assess your career needs and match it with the right program. We have partnered with the leading international review course providers to ensure you get the best learning experience. And of course, our professional team will guide you through your exam and preparation journey from day one until you get your certification done. How we do it? Simply we do it by offering a wide variety of certifications that are not only limited to accounting and finance, but we also provide certifications in the human resources, in supply chain management, and in digital marketing, which are delivered through multiple study formats, be it workshops, live online classes, live classes, self-study, or in-house trainings. When we talk about our corporate network, we can simply say it's a huge corporate network. In Canada, specifically, we can talk about CIBC Mellon, EY, PwC, KPMG, uh, RBC, Scotiabank, Concordia University, and so many other universities as well, be it in Quebec or outside of Quebec, and many other corporates and organizations and multinationals. Now, moving to the hot topic that we are addressing tonight, which is the CFA. So the CFA is the most highly recognized designation in the world of finance. The biggest corporates high, highly value it, and the content gets always updated to meet nowadays market requirements. And the most important uh, part is that the statistics, uh, the statistics shows that the CFA holders earn much more than the non-CFA holders. Uh, and no need to mention that there are multiple exam windows during the year. So for uh, level one, we have uh, four, uh, four exam windows in February, May, August, and November. For level two, we have three uh, three offerings per year, three months of offering, and for level three as well, 
uh, we have two offering in February and August and September. Uh, in a survey that was done by the CFA Institute back in 2019, the biggest majority of the candidates agreed that the CFA curriculum improved their understanding of important topics and reflected the current industry practices. And it focused a lot on the concepts that are important and relevant to their profession. And they felt that the exam questions covered important subjects that are related to their profession as well. So in a nutshell, we can say that the CFA designation is considered to be a door opener for a lot of opportunities in, uh, in many sectors such as the wealth management, the banking, the insurance, the investment. And accordingly, you can work as a portfolio manager, as a consultant, as a credit analyst, as a CFO, and in many other positions. So now the big question is how to become a CFA and how to maintain your charter. First, we should mention that the CFA program consists of three levels. Each level has its own exam. Passing the three exams is a must to obtain uh, the CFA charter. You should then meet the experience eligibility that can be done before, during, or after the participation in the CFA program. And here we have to mention that whenever you pass the exam, there is no validity date. So basically you own the results. And once you accumulate the, the needed experience, you can apply for the charter. And the experience must be directly involved with the investment decision-making process or producing a work that adds a value to the investment process. Uh, you will need as well to provide like some uh, references, professional references, who will be asked to comment on your experience and on your professional character. After completing the above three points, you will basically be eligible to become a charter holder and to maintain your charter you have to meet some eligibility requirements and to pay your yearly member dues. The education and experience requirements are not difficult to meet. You should uh, like basically have a bachelor's degree or be in the second year of a bachelor's degree or have a certain requirements or uh, years of, uh, of experience or a combination of a bachelor's degree and, a, <clears throat> and uh, years of uh, experience. And if we want to quickly go over the CFA exams, we could say that the level one exam consists of four hours that includes 180 MCQs. So we only have MCQs. And the level two also, it's a four hour and 24 minute exam and consists of a mixture of vignette and MCQs. And the level three as well, it's a four hours and 24 minutes exam and it consists of essays and MCQs. The exams are done in prometric centers that are spread all over Canada. So technically there is no need to travel abroad or to travel to the US to do the exams. You can do them on site in Canada. The results uh, are usually released within five to eight uh, weeks from writing the exam. As you can see as well, the passing rate uh, is low, which explains uh, the importance of having a tutor or an instructor who can help you dissecting the CFA condensed curriculum and to help you understand the concepts and the materials in a timely manner because time is of an essence in, the, in, your, in your CFA journey. And this is where Morgan International plays a major role. Now, before going uh, into the, the coming part, I want to highlight four uh, main challenges that you may face during your journey. First, it takes around 300 hours to prepare for each level. The CFA program is a long process and it's difficult to maintain uh, a steady level of motivation. So try to find a study partner or a study group uh, that uh, so that you can maintain a high level of motivation. And an efficient way to keep the, the motivation level high is to attend our live online classes where our instructors are there to support you and to answer all of your questions and to make you feel at ease with the learning outcome statement. Create your own notes and set a reasonable study plan, set daily goals and make sure you meet them. And it's, it is important to spend time trying to learn the theoretical material and information, but make sure that you practice as much as you can. 
the more you practice, the more you will master the material and the more you get yourself ready for the exam. Now, how to prepare for the CFA exams with Morgan International? Morgan has been offering the CFA uh, training courses for the past 19 years globally, and our portfolio consists of more than 12,000 candidates who prepared for their CFA exams with us. We are the partners of Cape and Schweizer, so technically our training materials are from them. All of our instructors are certified and experienced, and they are carefully selected, of course. They are trained and monitored continuously to give you the best classroom experience. Our program provides wide options to practice and to prepare for the exam. No need to mention that uh, the study materials are aligned with the CFA program. And it's worth mentioning that a big portion of the candidates who prepared with Morgan International, they have achieved already their CFA charter, which, which gives credibility to our program and to our learning system. And now, as a Morgan International candidate, uh, you receive exclusive services and support. So what's the added value that you will get? Our live online courses ensures a flexible, smooth, and interactive learning experience. It consists of 15 sessions. Each session is of a three hours. Of course, we're talking about 15 sessions per level that are guided by uh, expert and chartered instructor who are very well versed with the exams. Our class is an opportunity to interact with other candidates as well and benefit from their questions and their best practices. Accordingly, you will be given a lot and lot and lot of exam tips. And for sure, over and above the access to our classes, you will have the access to the Schweizer study plan and uh, exclusive resources where you can set your schedule up until the exam day. And you can access a comprehensive learning system with lots of services, lots of resources for a better exam preparation. Uh, our professional team is here to support you and to guide you all the way, of course, for any question, for any needed support. And it's worth mentioning as well that we have added practice recap sessions to our, uh, to our schedule to ensure that you are well prepared to take on the exam. Accordingly, <clears throat> there are a lot of study tools and resources which will be put in your service so you can prepare yourself for the exam, such as uh, practice and review sessions, recorded course lectures, checkpoint exam, topic quizzes, of course, the live online classes, and many other tools that uh, you can uh, you can see uh, on the screen uh, currently. Now, uh, if I want to give you some tips and uh, some best uh, practices, uh, to wrap up my section, I can give you many tips, of course, but the most important one is that in the CFA, there are no shortcuts. The one thing that stands between you and the success is the hard work and dedication. The three levels basically covers the same topics, but each level will give you the ability to deal or treat those topics from a different angle or a different uh, perspective. So for the level one, uh, as we mentioned, it requires at least 300 hours of preparations before sitting for the exam. And this level focuses on the theoretical knowledge and on, uh, of the concepts. Uh, now, since the level one focused on your knowledge, it tested your knowledge, the level two will test your ability to use that knowledge in realistic real-life situations. And reaching to the level three means that you have already come a long way in your CFA journey, and now it's time to finish strong. So the level three exam will furtherly test your ability to apply in real-life situations, to apply the knowledge in real life situations and to apply everything that you have learned in level one and two and to make the financial decisions. So our advice to you is to start early and be consistent, set a study plan and stick to it, cover all of the material. There is no way for you to predict what will be on the exam. So be ready to be tested on any of the topic, assess yourself regularly 
by reviewing what you think you have mastered and practice, practice, practice to identify your weak areas so you can rectify them prior to writing your exams. Do this by taking some mock exams under the same conditions which, uh, and this opportunity can be done within uh, our online uh, platform, the KPN platform. This will allow you to get used to the official format and be at ease on the exam day. Keep track of your performances and note that passing the exams has a lot to do with how you manage your time during the exam. And this is why we are re-emphasizing on the importance of the practice. So uh, the CFA program is not a walk in the park. It's a long and demanding journey. We know that, but trust me, it's rewarding at the end of the day and it's worth taking. Accordingly, don't lose hope. Just believe in yourself and you can do it. And after passing the exams, you may be tired. So reward yourself and plan for something uh, fun so that you can uh, have uh, some rest. And basically, this is uh, this is my part. Uh, thank you for your attention. And now I will hand uh, the steering wheel to Professor Wong, who will uh, take us through a demo lecture on the ethics. I'm absolutely sure that he has a lot of valuable information that he will be putting uh, on the table tonight. Uh, Professor Wong, thank you for being with us. And the floor is all yours. Okay, thank you, Alice. Can you please uh, start my video? Or better still, uh, if you can make me the host. You had the host uh, now, Professor Wang. Okay, so, okay, I'm trying to assist. There we go, there we go. There you are. Okay, good. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, I can honestly tell you I'm very, very excited to uh, be with you. Quite a good turnout, uh, especially some of you just finished uh, final examinations or maybe even have one the next day or so. And of course, it's during the holidays, so really appreciate you attending. Uh, first of all, I just want to check uh, the sound. Uh, can, you, can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, good, good. Okay, so I'll continue. Uh, can we make sure though that the participant can hear you? Uh, is can somebody raise it here? Uh, Dev, let me see. Faisal, can you? Uh, can you hear? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Uh, the, the participants are raising their hands. I see that. Ah, That's okay, what, yeah, perfect. Okay, That's we'll, great. we'll go on. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah. Anas, uh, you did a really good job. Uh, I, I really almost have nothing to say. Uh, you did such a complete job, but I'll try my best to uh, give you my two cents. I've been doing this for a long time. And what makes me uh, very valuable for you guys is that I teach uh, level one, I teach level two, and I also teach level three. So uh, this gives you um, a very, very good perspective of what to expect on each level. And I can tell you what, uh, what um, topics to really emphasize. Now, yeah. You know, Anis is uh, very right. Uh, you know, there, there's no magic sauce. There's no magic bullet. It's just a lot of hard work, but um, it's uh, worth it. Um, I, I can I can speak uh, quite authoritatively on this. I, I hold, uh, well, he already mentioned, but I, I hold uh, an MBA. I hold, uh, I earned a CPA, CA, and I also have a CFA. So uh, people ask me, uh, is it worthwhile to do your CFA? Well, let me answer factually. The MBA uh, has really declined in prestige. And for simple reasons that um, the universities have really diluted it. 
you know, when I did my MBA, they said, okay, if you want to do your MBA, you come in for two years. If you don't want to come in for two years, don't come. Nowadays, uh, you take a couple of uh, uh, courses on the weekend and they'll mail you an MBA. So unfortunately, unless you go to a very, very good school, uh, MBAs are really, really uh, has, has really lost their prestige. Now, Anders has also mentioned that the pass rate has really gone down for the CFAs. And, and you know, if you look at this, uh, um, like logically, and that's actually very, very good news because uh, if the pass rate has gone down, it, it means that the value of your CFA charter has gone up. And I, I can tell you that the CFA uh, destination has really, really maintained its uh, value. And Anders mentioned a couple of uh, places where this can apply, but I, I, I've seen so many broad uses for a CFA charter. Believe it or not, um, people in marketing, sometimes they require you to to uh, have a CFA destination. And and it's very, very simple because when you put those three little letters after your name, when you go see a client, even though you're in marketing, it gives you instant credibility. So when you talk to them, you know, they'll, they'll listen a little bit more careful, okay? So, okay, so uh, that's enough for CFA. I, I think it's really, really worth it. Um, yeah, you'll suffer, you know, the, I, there's no other way to tell you, you're gonna suffer. But in the end, when you're in those three little darn letters, you'll be very, very happy. So, uh, I, I hope that uh, you you will pursue it. It's, uh, I, I, uh, I, I'm very happy to help uh, young people succeed. And one of the most rewarding things about being a teacher is uh, I get emails later on saying, hey, thanks a lot, you know, uh, you helped me and I, I earned my charter. So this is what I would like to hear from you. So um, let, let's uh, get through some of the stuff here. Like, um, who's the best boxer? So, you, you know, you, you can uh, say, uh, um, Muhammad Ali, you can say this, you can say this, but in terms of the CFA, which topic is the most important? Okay, so uh, let's go through this. These are the 10 uh, main topics that you'll cover in level one, two, and three. Ethics, QM, economics, financial statement analysis, better known as accounting, corporate issuers, used to be called corporate uh, finance, equity, fixed income, derivatives, alternatives, portfolio management. So. All 10 is uh, the major topics that you cover in level one, two, and three, but in different proportions. So uh, for example, portfolio management is a, a relatively minor part in uh, level one, but it'll count for 40% of your exam in level three. So uh, let, let me help you there. So ethics, without doubt, ethics will be the most important uh, topic in, in your studies, because in level one, it counts for up to 20%. And level two, same thing, up to 15. And level three, 15. And the, the uh, very, very positive point is that if you uh, master level one, it's the same thing in level two, level three. The code of, of uh, ethics and standards of professional conduct is the same for all three levels. So learn it once, learn it well, then you're, uh, you're safe for the next two Two levels, level two and level three. So you pay attention to this. And I'm gonna give you a little sample uh, lesson how we do this in uh, Morgan to help you pass. QM, in level one, uh, basically statistics, we do uh, maybe 10%, a little bit less than level two. And in level three, we don't even touch it. Economics, pretty much a uh, standard throughout, roughly 10%. Uh, when, when they say economics, they really mean uh, macroeconomics. Now, financial statement analysis, be very, very careful, okay? Be very careful because I, I'm assuming most of you are uh, level one candidates. Um, you will find uh, financial statement analysis, better known as accounting, as really, really difficult. It, it really is, okay? And the reason is that um, when you take an accounting course, you do accounting. That's it, you know, you, on the exam, you get accounting. But on the CFA, it's different. We are not trying to make you into accountants. This is a CFA, not a CPA. So what you have to do is uh, twofold. First, you got to know the accounting. Then you got to apply and analyze it. And that's what makes it difficult. So if you learn the accounting, that's insufficient. You have to be able to apply it and tear it apart. Like, what's the difference between the FIFO and, and LIFO? How does that affect your earnings? So uh, we'll cover that in detail for you. And the good news is that... Um, once you get through level one, 
and you get to level three, bye bye, no more accounting, good riddance, and uh, you know something you really cheer because you know even though accounting is very very important in the real world, uh, nobody actually likes accounting. Corporate uh, issues, basically a corporate finance, uh, heavy in level one, less heavy in level two, and nothing in level three. Equity is uh, important throughout. What uh, makes it difficult in level three is all the stuff that if you learn in level one, two, uh, you will do again. But level three, level three, they throw in a lot of derivatives. And same thing for fixed income. Level three, there's a lot of derivatives. So uh, you might want to pay attention to that. So in level one, we have a basic introduction to derivatives, you know, options and, and forwards and so on. Level two, they um, hit you a little bit more. Level three, uh, this is actually misleading. They say it's five to 10, but because it creeps into your equities and fixed income, it's really a lot more than that. So when the time comes to level three, we will coach you very, very well in uh, mastering the stuff that you need to know for level three. Alternatives, alternative investments, uh, things like uh, infrastructure, real estate. Um, in, in my opinion, this is going to become more and more important in the exam because, first of all, you have to understand what the CFA uh, Institute is all about. The CFA Institute is two things. They want to promote the, the profession and they want you to be very, very qualified. And above all, they want you to be uh, au courant. They, they want you to be right on top of things. So if, if you understand portfolio management, uh, institutions you have maybe like a 6% in real estate and they don't do anything else. But nowadays, uh, because it's very, very difficult to make money in equities and very, very difficult to make money in fixed income, they are investing more and more in alternatives. So infrastructure, uh, timber, minerals, uh, basically a lot of real estate, this accounts for maybe up to 20% of a portfolio nowadays. So uh, this has become more and more important. So pay attention to alternatives. Portfolio management, basically, uh, how do you bake a cake? Uh, you know, level one, you learn all the ingredients and in level three, you learn how to blend it. Like, you know, if you're gonna make a cake, how much flour, how much sugar, how much yeast and so on. And really this is a whole exam. In level three, 40% of the exam is uh, portfolio management. So that, that's the overview. Um, there's one thing I, I do want to mention. I, I don't have the uh, uh, luxury and, and the privilege of uh, talking to you individually, but I, I don't know uh, how many of you, maybe you can show me by, by your hand, who, who has um, a non-business background? You know, somebody that has not studied uh, uh, BCom or business or something like this. Do, do we have any participants here that uh, come from a completely different field? Which have which have no business background. Maybe you can show me a hand. Uh... Anybody not have a business background? Okay. The reason I'm asking is that um, the CFA um, is not really meant for for uh, necessarily uh, limited to business students. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's open to everybody. So in the course of uh, teaching uh, with Morgan, I had uh, a medical doctor. He's actually still practicing up at the, the uh, Winter Dream Hospital. Uh, we've had uh, uh, pharmaceutical people. We, we had marketing people. We had all kinds of people. So think of, of this, if you do not have a, a BCom, it doesn't really matter. That's what level one is. Level one is really a mini BCom. So if you don't have the uh, business background, it doesn't matter. This is where it's all covered level one. And so you might say, yeah, yeah, but, but um, you know, I'm an engineer. Um, I, I don't know anything about accounting, but you know, everything le levels out because if you have an engineering background or some kind of technical background, you might have to work a little harder than accounting, but when it comes to the economics, it comes to the statistics, you know, it's gonna be child's play for you. you. You can just skip right through it. So that's what it is. Level one is basically a, a mini BCom program and it's for all studies, not just the business people. So what's the difference between level one and level two? Level two is same as level one. 
except you go deeper and wider. So everything is uh, covered again in, in, from level one, but it's going to be much, much more sophisticated. And uh, I'll give you a little bit, a little bit of a tip now. When you go, and I assume you will, uh, if you work a little harder, you will reach level three. And what happens there is uh, when I start my level three classes, I, I really kid them. I, I, I say, uh, what does the CFA stand for? Of course, they're all going to say uh, Chartered Financial Analyst. I said, no, forget it, forget it, okay? That's no longer applicable because when you uh, reach level three, you are now a portfolio manager. So instead of uh, uh, you going to get coffee, now you decide like uh, what proportion of um, assets you should put in a portfolio, how much fixed income, how much equity, how much alternative investments. So now at this level, you're no longer an analyst. You're not analyzing anything. Now you're learning how to bake the cake, put all the ingredients together. Uh, okay, any, any questions so far? You, you can uh, go through chat where, through, through your uh, microphone. You can ask. If not, I'll give you an example of what um, we do in, uh, in one of the classes. Uh, and the one I chose is uh, ethics because, uh, again, ethics is really the most important uh, uh, topic in the whole curriculum because you are drilled on this in level one two and three there's no change whatever you learn in level one applies equally at level two and three okay ethics and and these are typical slides that we we uh we use in uh in morgan and you'll get copies of these so the exact focus is um there's a well if this is a class i would tell you underline these things when we talk about code of ethics, um, I tell you to put number six here. And the reason is that there's six code of ethics. So make sure you know the six. And then we talk about standards of professional conduct. And I ask you to put seven here because the seven standards of professional conduct. And to help you study, uh, I'm gonna tell you, focus more on the standards of professional conduct. They might throw in a few question, questions on the code of ethics and most of the times they don't. Most of the exam will be on the standards of professional conduct. So you got to know the seven. Then they introduce something the, uh, called Gibbs, uh, the Global Investment Performance. Uh, they really lightly touch on this, but they, they will um, uh, cover this in depth in level three. So for the time being, we do not have to worry about Gibbs. Okay, we, we have to worry about the code of ethics and especially the standards of professional conduct. So six and seven. Now, it says here that at level one, it's going to be as much as 15, 20%, as many as 27, 36 questions, that's for sure. But uh, it says here that uh, important for marginal candidates. Let me fill you in, okay? Um, I'm going to tell you something that I heard from the horse's mouth. I was at um, a graduation for, for uh, the CFA uh, candidates. And the president of the CFA Institute came up and addressed us. And one of the questions we asked her is that, how important is ethics? Is it true that if you fail ethics, you will fail the exam? In other words, if you pass all the topics and you score, let's say 70, 80%, but you fail ethics, are you gonna fail? So this is directly from the horse's mouth. She says, no, that's not true. If you pass the exam, uh, you get the, the, the going rate uh, for the pass rate that year, you will pass. Then we came up with a second question. If you are a borderline candidate, and let's say the pass rate, uh, not the pass rate, the pass mark for that year is 68%, and you get 67%, what do you do? She said that, if the candidates are very, very close to passing, we will look at their ethics marks. If the ethic marks are very, very good, they will pass. So that's how important the ethics is. It could be the difference between passing and not passing. So I, I don't need to emphasize this anymore. Uh, not only is ethics uh, good, that, that could determine between you go going through uh, L1 or L2, but it carries L1, L2, L3. So learn it well. and. Um, You'll be coasting for level two and you'll be coasting for level three. Okay. Um, 
Now, this is how you study. I just told you to put number seven if we were having a class, because uh, you know we get slides, but I like to give you some value added. Of the seven, is professionalism, integrity of capital markets, duties, clients, duties, employers, your work, in other words, your investment analysis, your recommendations and actions. What about conflicts of interest? And what is your responsibility as a CFA member or CFA candidate? Now, of course, all seven is important. Of course, on the exam, they can ask any one of the seven. But if you're a betting person, which ones should you focus on? Remember the CFA Institute is very, very practical. You know, they're not a, a academic society. They want to train professionals with a very, very high caliber of knowledge for the profession in, in the capital markets. So you will, most of you will be working, right? So uh, this is very important. You have to pay attention to duties and employers because, uh, you know, um, if you're working for somebody, you, you, you have to be loyal to them. So you have to really pay attention to this standard. And of course, you can have clients. So you really have to pay attention to choose the clients. So these two are very, very important. And then there's something called integrity of capital markets. Uh, this really means uh, don't bite the hand that feeds you. In other words, uh, don't practice collusion. Don't practice fraud. Because if that brings down the capital markets, um, it's going to be pretty bad. Like uh, you guys will have no job, and what's worse is I'm gonna, not going to have any job. So I'm just kidding. But uh, we do not want anybody to um, uh, somehow weaken the integrity of the capital markets. Think of it this way: Would you invest in the stock market if you knew it was if you knew it was credit, um, crooked? And the answer is no. If, if I thought the New York Stock Exchange was crooked, of course I would not invest in it. So you can see that how important integrity of the capital markets is. Okay, now, um, obviously for my name, you know I'm Chinese, but I'll say something quite bold. Would I invest in the Chinese market? And my answer is probably not. Or if I invest, I would not invest in a single company. I, I would may, maybe do a, a ETF or something in China. And the simple reason is that the Chinese uh, markets, um, they're not free flowing. If the government uh, wants markets to go up, they will dictate the markets go up and they'll, 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 um, they'll go up. If they want markets to decline, same thing. So it's uh, manipulated. So uh, we cannot say that the Chinese markets uh, are integral. Now, um, the other one, one that's really important is investment analysis because that's your work. So basically, uh, you have to do your research. You, do, you should not plagiarize. And when you tell your clients, uh, you should... Uh, tell them in a very direct language, like uh, either you buy, you sell, you don't say, well, maybe this, maybe that. You should be very, very direct. Okay, so these are the, the three or four that we really um, emphasize. Integrity of the capital markets, duties to the clients, duties to the employers, and investment analysis, recommendations, and actions. Now, how do you study? In a way... Um, Studying ethics is really, really easy in a way. I'll show you why. People think that if you memorize all seven of them, you'll pass the exam. That is not right. That's totally, totally, totally incorrect. If you can verbatim repeat all seven recommendations and, and applications, it will not do you any good because on the exam, they expect you to know it. They will not ask you to quote it. The key word is application. So the exam questions will, will give you an example. Then they might say, what did uh, this particular person violate? Is it uh, he violated uh, duties of clients or duties of employers? And the new exams, uh, it used to be they covered like one standard at a time. Now they would hit you with maybe two or three at the same time. So remember when you study ethics, it's not repeat, it's the application. And I'll show you why, in a way, it's really, really easy to study. After each standard, so for example, the first one is uh, professionalism. Well, they give you the, the, the law itself, but they, they give you eight applications. So 
Um, the Morgan notes give you application, but uh, when you get the CFA books, they also give you the application. So if you really want to know how to prepare, for example, read the applications. They give you eight examples here and uh, more in the CFA Institute uh, books, curriculum books. And because the CFA Institute wants you to know how to, how to apply these things. So they give you examples on, on uh, how and when to apply each standard. So this is how you study. Like don't just memorize the, uh, the standard, know the application. Okay, uh, I totally agree with Anis. Uh, you know, th there's no substitute for uh, practice. You just got to do more and more and more. And believe me, uh, we, we, we have enough for you. Uh, besides the lectures, uh, there's uh, Swizer, Pro Q Bank, there's CFA Ecosystem, and then there's uh, unquestioned, uh, on demand questions. And uh, at the end, just before you are ready to uh, write the exam for real, we offer you a mock exam. So uh, the mock exam not just covers ethics, it covers all the things that you'll, you'll see uh, when you see the exam. So um, you, you'll, 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 you'll sweat a lot, okay? You, if you want to apply, then you'll be challenged with all these questions, but uh, uh, in the end, uh, you will be properly prepared. Now, um, is it worthwhile to take a prep course? I can tell you this, um, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, just talking about Morgan, but the evidence is that uh, if you take a prep course, you usually can improve your chances by a good uh, 10 to 15% of the pass rate. So if the pass rate is uh, a miserable 40%, then uh, it would not be unusual for you to, um, after uh, working hard on any prep course, to get the 40, 50, 60, and even higher. Um, I can tell you one exceptional year, in level three uh, for Morgan, we had, um, uh, Sylvia, I, I think we had like 11 students in level three that year and all, all 11 of them passed, all 11 of them passed. So it, yeah. yeah, we had a 100% pass rate. Yeah, yeah, so it could happen. Uh, this is unusual, but uh, the pass rate usually is, is much better than the international average. Why? Because uh, there's some things that, uh, it's not even apparent today because, look, when you study by yourself, uh, it's hard discipline. It's very, very hard. You know, like, yeah, sometimes you come, a lot of you will be working. Sometimes you come home and you say, look, I'm very tired. I'll do it next week. But the problem is that uh, it, when you do it yourself, yes, uh, you, you, you're capable of doing it yourself. But you don't have the discipline. And what's deadly is uh, not only the 300 hours, but... If you fall behind one week, it's really, really hard to catch up. Really, really hard to catch up. So when you take a prep course, um, we pace you. Every week we do uh, uh, different topics. So uh, this paces you and uh, you won't fall behind. That. That's so valuable. And then um, we finish it well before your exam. So uh, you'll have time to review. And then all the prompts are always, always available for, for helping you. So, uh, you know, you really have a, a whole package. and and the discipline of um, having classes every week. And Hannes also mentioned that you will meet other students um, in the class. So you set up a buddy system. You know the old saying that, that misery loves company? It's so true. Like, uh, you know, if you're a little bit discouraged, you, you talk to somebody else and say, yeah, I had trouble with that too. And, and you work it out. Or maybe um, the, the group that you have, the, um, one is stronger in, in statistics than you are, and you help each other. So it's the whole system. It's not just uh, the course itself. Okay, let's for fun. Let's uh, let's let's try this. This is a, a typical question that uh, we would do in class because uh, once we give the lecture, we give you some practice questions. Uh, let's see, who would like to read this? Anybody like to read this out loud? One of the participants. Somebody. Let's see. Uh, I can't. Oh, Sh Shiraz, uh, you gonna read for us? Yes, I can read. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, which of the following is a correct statement of a member's or a candidate's DOT under the code and standards? Do you want me to read the answers as well? Yes, yes, as in yes, the option? yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Option A, in the absence of a specific applicable law or other regulatory requirements, the code and standards govern the member's or candidate's action. Option B, a member or a candidate is required to comply only with applicable local laws 
rules, regulations, or customs, even through the code and standards may impose a higher degree of responsibility or a higher degree on the member or candidate. Option C, a member or candidate who trades securities in a securities market where no applicable local laws or stock exchange rules regulate the use of material non-public information may take investment action based upon material non-public information. Excellent. Hey, Shiraz, I want You're you welcome. in my class. I want you in my class. Huh? <laughs> Thank uh, you. Sylvie, can, do we have a scholarship? Available? I wish. I did ask before, but they said no. We'll, we'll try. We'll try. We'll I try. don't know. Yeah, we'll I definitely see. want you in the class. Definitely. So uh, there's a couple of things here that remember I told you um, application. You can see uh, it's not just to memorize the uh, seven standards. Like how do you apply it? So um, I, I know when you read this, it's very, very lengthy and, and so on. But um, I don't know if you pick one. And the answer should have been A, okay? So what it really says is um, that the code and standards, it uh, covers everything, and that's the most important uh, uh, principle. If, if, if the local law is more strict, then you apply to the more strict law, but if there's no local laws, then uh, the CFA standards and uh, professional conduct applies. So that is uh, all pervasive. Now, let's do another one. Uh, somebody else would like to try it? Can somebody else uh, volunteer? Shiraz, I think they like your voice. So can you uh, read this one also? Okay, I think this is the same question. Uh, one minute. Yeah, okay, there we go. Okay. Quinn sat for CFA level three exam this past weekend. He updates his resume with the following statement. In finishing the CFA program, I improved my skills related to researching investments and managing portfolios. I will be eligible for the CFA charter upon completion of the required work experience. Option A, Quinn violated the code and standards by claiming he improved his skills through the CFA program. Option B, Quinn violated the CFA code and standards by incorrectly stating that he is eligible for the CFA charter. Option C, Quinn did not violate the code and standards with his resume update. Remember, the CFA program, um, they want you to be very humble. They don't want you to exaggerate your uh, credentials. So um, he put this on his resume. I improved my skills relate to work and managing portfolios, and I will be eligible for the CFA charter upon completion of the required work experience. Uh, is this factual? And the answer is uh, no. Hannes has already mentioned this. Uh, like uh, when they say work experience, what do they mean? You know, like, okay, uh, I'm working as an accountant. Would that qualify as work experience? As you know, to earn your CFA charter, you've got to pass all three levels, right? But then you have to have four years of work experience. So what is four years of work experience? If you work as an accountant, would that qualify you? And the answer is no. Uh, what if you're working in, in marketing? No. So he has really exaggerated. So uh, he has violated the code of standards by incorrectly saying that he's eligible for the CFA charter. No, 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 no. What's, what what the, the specific is, oh, you're gonna have to be very nice to me. I'll tell you why. Because when you guys uh, finish level three, uh, you need somebody with a CFA charter, like myself to sponsor you. So I have to sponsor you to the CFA Institute and then have to uh, attest to your work experience. And then with that, then you, you'll get your CFA charter, but you gotta be sponsored by somebody. And um, we have to qualify your work experience. Now, fortunately, um, I don't wanna scare you because not everybody's gonna want or will be working in investments. Let me tell you a, a, a true story. One student is in level three uh, with us, level one, two, and three, all three levels, and, and he, he passed. Then uh, he asked me, can you please sponsor me? I said, of course, you know, uh, I've known you for three years and uh, you worked very hard and you passed the exams that you deserve. 
And uh, I said, where do you work? This is a true story. This story is so good that I cannot make it up. Uh, he says, I work for a Cirque du Soleil. I said, what? He said, I, I work there. So um, how do we get from Cirque du Soleil to a CFA charter? So I said, tell me more. What do you do? He says, um, I work on projects. I work on shows. And I do financial analysis. And I recommend to the board whether the show is going to be profitable or not. And uh, what kind of uh, cost controls and revenue expectations we should do. So I said, that's perfect. Because... Work experience, uh, as defined by the CFA state, is experience that that are decision making related to investments. So if you look at the broad picture, yes, he worked for a company that's in the entertainment, but his work really was uh, related to investments. And sure enough, um, he, uh, he he did receive his uh, charter. So I'm very happy about that. Okay, now this is probably the uh, the best part of the the uh, information session uh, today, I I'm open to any any questions that you have. Uh, you can either write on chat uh, and or reply. Or better still, you know, verbally ask me anything you want, and I'll try to help you. Any questions? I I know Addis has been very very comprehensive, and uh, he's covered really a lot of it. But if you have any additional questions, uh, uh, please feel free to ask me. Um, there is a question in the chat. In the chat, can you please also cover an important ethics topic for level three? Um, that was Cheryl's. Yeah, I, I will. Yeah, I, I will tell you this. There's no difference from level one, two, and three. It's the same. The only difference. Remember, at the beginning, I said there's something called Gibbs, the Global Investment Performance Standards. Well, in um, level one, we just basically ask you what it stands for. But in level three, they ask you how to calculate it. Uh, okay, let me explain to you what, what Gibbs is. The CFA Institute um, believes in competition. They say competition is good, okay? But competition should be fair. So can you imagine, uh, we have two investment firms. One claims that they have earned 22%. And another one, Claims, well, we didn't do 20%, 22%. We only got 12%. But, you know, unless they're reporting on equal footing, then uh, it doesn't mean anything. How do we know that 22% has not been fudged up? So what the CFA Institute did was they introduced um, the global investment standards. And everybody that um, reports their performance has to do it on an equal basis so that if somebody reports 22% and somebody reports 12%, they have come up these numbers uh, using the same methods. So it's fair competition, it's standard competition. And that's what you, you're going to learn and have to apply in level three. You will have to uh, uh, know the code of ethics. You have to know the standards of professional conduct, like in level one, two. But in addition, you will have to know how to calculate the uh, Gibbs. That's the main difference. Gibbs, Gibbs is, uh, is emphasized a lot in Love 3. Any other questions? So I imagine whoever is asking this uh, probably is uh, going to rate Level 3 pretty soon. This is uh, Shay Rose, okay. the, the one who just spoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no that's fine. Uh, whether you're doing Level 1, 2, or 3, uh, no, feel free to ask me questions and uh, I'll try to help you. Any other questions? Well, um, yes. if you, if you, yes, yeah, sorry, somebody had a question? Uh, no, no it's, uh, it's just Cher Rose who answered that she's a level three candidate. Okay, that's good, that's good. Um, let's see. Now, everybody has uh, Sylvie's contact information and Anna's uh, contact information. I, I know some of you are quite shy and uh, you might not want to ask questions now, but if you do come across questions uh, later on, please contact Sylvie or Anna's and they'll contact me and uh, I'll reply to you. It's my pleasure to help you if I can. Professor Wong, uh, thank you a lot uh, for the valuable advices and for sharing uh, your experience. Uh, 
and it's more it goes beyond sharing the information you are sharing with us your experience and this is the valuable thing that uh, that we really uh, appreciate and of course thank you for for the presentation uh, i would like to thank as well the attendees uh, we will be sending you a subsequent email that contains all the information that you may need to know about the CFA. And of course, it includes as well uh, the prep packages that we offer and the discounts scheme that you are currently offering as well. And as a heads up, uh, our live online class for the level one will be uh, will kick off on the 23rd of January 2024. And uh, uh, of course, you can uh, reach out to Sylvie and myself uh, anytime in order to provide you with the needed support and to answer uh, your questions. So uh, feel free to ask all of the questions because there are a lot of information that are related to, this, to the CFA and our uh, duty is to answer those questions in order to uh, relieve you from the stress. You will have a lot of uh, of stress to study and to practice uh, as much as we can help you in going beyond uh, and to uh, bypass uh, the stress of the administrative stuff we are here to answer your questions so until we get in contact i thank you again and i wish you a very nice uh, evening and hopefully in the coming few days we'll be sending you uh, the email so uh, I'd like to thank you for now, Sylvie. Thank you, Professor Wong. Thank you. Thank and, you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Anis. Thank, thank, you, thank you, Professor Wong. And thank you to all the attendees. Thank you, Sylvie, for organizing this. Perfect. Have a Welcome. nice evening. Bye-bye.